So today I want to show you how I do um, airbrush makeup. Now I'm going to do it on myself and the reason I'm going to do this is because I've got a photo shoot today and um, I really wanted to have a very flawless appearance for the photos. Now I've already did, I did a mask last night, I've done my moisturizer and my eye cream so I will be going in with my primer. It's very hot here and sweaty so let's see how we go. My primer of choice today is the Youngblood Mineral Primer. Really helps to create that little bit of a base and helps the um, airbrush just sit on flawlessly. Okay, so while we let the uh, primer sort of settle in, I'm going to put the airbrush together. So I have the airbrush gun and it goes into this rather large machine. I do have a bigger one, I love this machine. I've had it for the last 12, possibly longer actually. I um, just tried to put that in the wrong end. <laughs> possibly longer, many, many years. It's the eye water and I love it. So I'm just gonna attach the gun and then I'll fill it up with some product in here and then I'll start spraying the face. So my airbrush product of choice is the Element 2. This is number four. You can see that I've actually written it on there because the numbers are very small. So what I'm going to do, normally when I do my clients, I will actually do their eyes first and then their base. I'm leaving my hair down because of course I want it down for this shoot. So I don't want it, I don't want to sort of ruin the curls. So it is looking a bit bizarre. So I'll just push it back. And today I will actually do my entire face with it. When using the airbrush, I always go in and do one side first and then the other and you'll find that it's a very fine layer so initially it won't look like I'm putting anything on my face at all so just going in I'm doing the other side and then I will do down the middle and the center of my face as well so it's very very fine layers and by doing the fine layers it's a bit like painting you never go in with your final coat you always make sure you have some base coats and you just build it up slowly so the same thing applies with the airbrush so you eventually start seeing that my face will start changing color and looking more and more flawless. I'm making sure that I do run this down my neck and into my decolletage there. I'm just going to go a little bit slower here to show you the difference in color. So very, very slowly it's starting to change and those rosy cheeks are starting to sort of disappear. So small amounts of product go a very long way. And what you find with the airbrush is you can actually sort of just go in and get little areas and add a bit more to each place. So you don't have to have a very thick or heavy cut, um, face of makeup. It looks very, very um, light. Um, you don't feel like you're wearing anything. It is definitely my preferred makeup of choice when I'm doing my clients. So I think I'll just add a little bit more to my gun and just go down my neck and decolletage. And this way it just looks really, really seamless. I've sped this up so I don't normally go that fast, just so you know. Just going in with a little bit more, so another coat. So going onto this side first, same with the other side, and really just sort of aiming those rosy cheeks a little bit down the center of my face. I haven't done up under my eyes, I will do that later. Now that I've done the base, I'm going to come in with a slightly darker shade. They do have um, contouring shades, but I prefer to just go that slightly darker and I'm just going to frame my face and do the contouring. You'll see that I'm just placing this exactly where I um, want to contour my face, so really framing it. So I've turned the um, air gun down a little bit so it becomes a little bit more precise. So just going in underneath my cheekbone there and up over my forehead and just along my jawline as well. So instantly you can see that it's warming up my face and creating that contour. I'll also use the shade and go down a little bit down onto my decolletage as well. So the key to airbrushing is once you've done it, don't touch it. It's really important that you don't go in with a brush because as soon as you do, it's not airbrushed anymore, it's brushed. So just let it sort of settle in, do its thing. So this is when I go on to, um, for me, I would do my eyes, my brows, lashes. So if it was a client, I would have done the eyes first, then I airbrush. So you can go either way, it's preference, your own personal preference. So I'm gonna head in with the power brow and I'll do my brows. Here I am just using the power brow. I find this 
product, really easy to use. The spoolie wand is nice and small, very accurate, and it just looks great. My brows have been recently done, so they're looking nice and sculpted, and just brushing that through. Trying to pay a little bit of extra attention today because I know I'll get these um, branding photos done. So um, I will, uh, when they are done, I will link them in, a couple of them maybe, in the description. So I'm just going to go in with the um, MAC paint pot and I'm just placing this over the top and I know I've put that foundation down but I don't, I don't mind that it's down, it's just another layer. I do love this paint pot to give me that um, sort of base before I put the eyeshadows on. Today I've decided to use this matte, this is called the Semi Sweet Nines palette and it's all matte shades. So I'm going to go in with these ones and even a touch of that. So you'll know why when you see the photos. As always, I just like to pop that up underneath the brow and in the inner corner of the eye there. Okay, after that, just matte shade just under the brows. Now I'm taking this one here. It's like a mauve sort of mushroom shade, and I'm going to pop that just into the crease. So as always, just running that shade through the crease and up onto the brow bone. I do like to make sure that it goes up on that brow bone a little bit, and that just helps open up the eyes and really lift your eyes if they're starting to hood slightly. So just bringing that same product back and forth, using like windshield wiper movements back and forth to create that crease. I'm also running a little bit underneath the eyes as well. And then I'm going back in with the same color, a smaller brush. So it's exactly the same color and just really planting that right in the corner and just getting a little bit more color there. Okay, so now I'd like to introduce this color here. So it's sort of more of a wine color and something that's quite on brand for me. So just grabbing that colour and placing it right in that outer corner and sweeping it through the crease, just following that socket line. And same on the other side, running a small amount under the eye as well. Always go back in with a fluffy brush and just sort of blend out that crease just so it all is very seamless. And do that on the other eye as well. This is a very neutral shade and I'm just popping this over the mobile lid in the inner corner there. I'm going to take the lighter shade again and just really make sure that that inner corner is slightly lighter. Going in with the black Rumi Cosmetics um, eyeliner pencil. I really like this one, it's nice and creamy. And I know I normally use brown but because this is a photo shoot I do want to just really create a bit of drama on that lash line. As always, I like to place the liner really close to the lash line and just drag it out slightly with my finger, giving myself a little bit of a baby wing and bringing it right into the inner corner. I'm doing the tight line as well and a little bit underneath the eye. Going on on the other side, same thing. I always find this side a little bit harder to do. can't seem to get the wing as good as I do on the other side <laughs> for some reason and underneath the eyes as well. I'm using the Rumi Cosmetics Mascara, it's in black, and I'm just sweeping that through my lashes. This helps to separate them and they look a little bit longer and give me some more fullness and volume in the lashes. I'm going to take the NARS concealer and I'm just going to put a very small amount just under the eyes. I don't like too much concealer under, under my eyes because I do feel it sits in my wrinkles, so I like it nice and thin and I'll highlight some of the high points as well. using a fluffy brush because I don't want to upset the airbrush so I'm just really doing a small amount so unlike I would normally um, when I don't airbrush I use a little bit more product I haven't airbrushed under the eyes so it won't matter there and it'll seamlessly fuse into the airbrush product just really delicate so I'm sort of just being very wispy with this brush so I don't want to upset the base. I'm going to use the Airbrush Bronzer by Charlotte Tilbury. This is number two. Now the great thing with the airbrush 
is when you place these powder products, they just will go on seamlessly. So I'm just going to go over where we did that nice warmth of the airbrush and really reinforce where I've framed the face. So just framing the face and I'm also going to grab a more detailed brush and I'm going to contour the nose as well. I'm concentrating really hard to make sure I do this correct. For blush, oh, just I've dropped it. I've chosen a loose mineral brush. This is in a Disty Pink and I popped it on the little dish. And I'm just using a smaller brush. I just don't want to get too carried away. So I'm just going to place that on the high points of my cheeks and really just see if that gives me that just a little bit of extra colour. Um, that I'm looking for. I'll add a bit more. It's really nice and high because I want to keep this look nice and lifted. So one of my favorite little tricks is to take whatever blush that you're using and just pop it just into this brow bone area here. And it just helps to really soften out the edges and then it just sort of brings that color in that you've used on your face into the eye makeup. And it's very subtle. I'm gonna use the translucent powder today to set this. Um, and I'm using a little triangular powder puff. This is another one of those times where you really need to trust the process. So bear with me, this will look better as we go on. So yes, you can see the powder looks a little bit full on, but I just take a really massive brush and I just buff it in and it just really helps to just really soften everything and make it all look like my skin. And this will settle in as well, especially once my natural oils come to the foil, it should settle in and just look very natural. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do for the lips, but I do have this color that I'm quite liking and I used it in a recent video called Franklin and I think it will work, but until I get my outfit on, we'll, we'll soon see. So this could change. I'm not going to use a, a liner because I don't have the exact color. Uh, I know I should, but I'm not. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm. For now, we're going to run with that color and we'll just see. I feel instantly, I feel like my blush needs to be a bit more. So, quite often, when you do put a lip color on, you do decide that it changes the look of the makeup and you think, okay, something's missing. So, I feel I'm just adding a little bit of loose mineral blush. This is Plumberry, it's another Young Blood shade, and it's just got a hint of plum in there. And I'm thinking, That'll just bring the cheeks up a little, maybe too much. I have to be very careful because I have quite rosy cheeks, so. I'm sure by the time I do the shoot, I would have changed this, but hopefully. I do have work a couple of clients first, and then I have the shoot, but I like to get ready early, and then I just touch it up. Now, the hair. This is, this could be an issue. So the plan is to just take it out of the hair clip and let's just see. So I may need to put a couple of curls through the top but for now it's going to look a little bit like this. Anyway let me know what you think.